Scorpio singles. This is for Scorpio Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, could be Venus as well. And then also if you're like, ooh, that Scorpio is really hot. What are they into with their love life like this month? All right. So um, one thing I wanted to mention to you, Scorpio, is if you don't know what your moon sign is, a good place to look that up is um, at a link I put in the description box below. So there you have it. All right, here we go. So how do you see yourself this month? <laughs> okay, so Scorpio singles. Let's talk about the Mercury retrograde that we're in until the 5th and then the period of time following the 5th because it might go to like 13 through 15 through the 18th, something like that. I don't remember. But there's that shadow period where those energies still persist. So you're a single Scorpio, right? But you don't really see yourself as a single Scorpio. You really don't. You still have an attachment. And now this could be somebody from the past and you're like trying to reconcile, work it out. Because that's what happens in retrogrades. People come back, right? And so you're like, oh, I got to take this slow because I don't want to get hurt again. Like this person and I, we don't really want the same things. Like I have to be careful and like assess what's going on here and maybe cut through that bullshit. Um, but you don't necessarily see yourself as a single. Now, whether or not somebody has actually come back into your life, it doesn't matter. You could be thinking about them or you just might not actually see yourself as single because you're like, eh, not in the mood to date. Okay. So that's kind of the energy of um, where you're at. Now, how are others seeing you? Oh, this is interesting. So they see you like this person has been through it all. They've had a lot of experiences and things that maybe didn't go the way that they wanted them to. But so now moving forward, they're going to be very fair in their communications with others. Like this person um, is going to be fair in a relationship with me. They'll be very straightforward, that kind of a thing. They're going to make their decisions quickly and then really just try to hold on to the things that are important to them. And that's good. And but Here's the thing about the way that those cards came out. It might also mean that they see you maybe um, a little bit focused too much on work, on love, on materialism, that sort of a thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if that's exactly where your focus is, right? However, if you're trying to attract love, you maybe, you know, as a Scorpio, it's a little bit uncharacteristic for you. Like, because who you really are is a very emotional person and they don't see you as very emotional at all. So what should you be avoiding this month? being okay this is really interesting you might be very single-minded now I'm going to tell you a little story about myself because I'm a Scorpio moon and I personally feel like people are more their moon sign than they are their sun sign and the reason why is because your moons represent your emotions and your emotional self is more true to who you are and dictates the way that you behave and your motivations and things like that more so than like just the general qualities that you have like as a person like oh this person ha um for example i'm a leo sun that person usually has um frizzy hair uh, leos have big hair <laughs> my hair is just frizzy it's not big but anyway um where i'm going with this is your hyper focus so for me I obviously read my own cards and sometimes I do trades with other people. So the most accurate person that I know actually pulled the same exact stuff that I did for myself. And so because I know this is like a prophecy that's going to happen, I'm super focused on that. Like in regards to my love life, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that because I'm waiting for this because I feel like Allah or God universe has promised me this thing and it's coming. And, you know, it's coming in two months and it's great. So until then, whatever. But here's the thing. This is the, the area of caution that you need to exercise, right? Because we can manifest all day and, like, really trust that we're going to get something. And maybe we are. But however, we might not get it the way that we want it. It might come to us a little bit different, right? It's like that movie Bedazzled where, um, if you haven't seen it, it's definitely hilarious. Um this guy, he makes a deal with the devil and he gets all of these wishes, you know, just like you would with a genie. And um, he reads in this girl's diary that she wants a man who's sensitive, right? And he just loves her. He wants her so badly to love him back. So he wishes to be the most sensitive man in the world. And so then they're together and he's crying at sunsets and, 
you know, she touches him and, <laughs> and he can't even take it. So it's like, be careful what you wish for, <laughs> right? You don't always get things the way that you anticipate getting them because this is what it's saying is there, there's something here that you're refusing to look at because you are so hyper-focused on one thing <laughs> and so maybe there's some other things that are trying to come in that are equally good for you but you're just like mm, you're not even looking so they're like you don't have to change exactly what you're doing but but maybe you know like when confusion is there because your mind is scattered, it's frustrating, right? It's hard to focus. But sometimes that's where your good ideas come from. So maybe be a little bit more flexible in your thinking and in what you're feeling, all right? Um, what should you do in order to grow or increase the likelihood of love coming into your life? So it says be very direct and honest exactly as you're doing. This is not a good time to make big changes like... Um, with your work or with um, like the place that you live, it's not a good time to move. And the reason being is perhaps where either where you live or um, where you work and how that affects your day-to-day -day routines might have something to do with the person who's destined to show up for you. So let's say you always get gas at a certain gas station. Um, you might meet the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams at that place. But if you were to move, you're not going to be going back there as often, right? If ever. So um, the other thing is like, you know what? If you're feeling all over the place, that's okay. Embrace it. Feel it. If you're not feeling as confident as usual, that's okay. Embrace it. Feel it. Reflect on what your attachments are, even if they are unhealthy. It doesn't say that you have to break them right now, even though that's kind of what we're trying to do with the new moon, the eclipse, and the retrograde. But what it's saying is you can divine some wisdom from the things that aren't good for you, right? Like, at least you can figure out what is good for you by contrast. And they're like, by the end of the month, you're going to be doing what's right for you, what is in your highest good. So, you know, if it requires you to stick around in a like kind of a shittier situation for a while or to keep doing things that are maybe not the best decisions but you're aware of it mentally that's okay so long as you have the mental maturity to also figure out what the next thing is okay so um what is working for you in the month of september in order to bring love into your life creating routines and um being very like organized being on top of your bills, things like that, um, making those kind of things priorities, keeping your house clean. And it's weird. Like, why is that working for you in regards to love? Because it changes who you're attracting. It's going to bring somebody better for you into your life who will not hurt you. Because you have a history as a sensitive Scorpio bringing in people that hurt you. And so you've learned these lessons, right? We might still have some unhealthy attachments to some of those people, but the point of that would be to remind us exactly what we don't want. I'm not going to get in a situation like that again, mm -mm, right? So that's kind of the lesson that we're learning here. Now, um, where did I want to go with that? I don't know. So what's not working for you? Let's focus on that. Um, well, things are coming to the end of a cycle. They're coming to the end of a period, whether you like it or not. So sometimes we are comfortable in the situations we are in, even if we don't like them. They're routine. <laughs> and I say that, and here we go. They're routine. And um, it's our normal. It's all we know. And so um, this is specifically for, uh, there might be a few of you who are watching this, but you're actually a Scorpio in a relationship, okay, like in a marriage or a marriage-like relationship, and you're like, I want to be single. So I'm going to watch this video because I want to find out what Scorpio singles got going on, right? Like if I just break it off right now, uh, what would that be like? <laughs> so, so basically, they're like, you know what? It, it's even though I'm going to do a couple's video, it's like, you know what? This is coming to the end of a period where. Um, and I'm not ready for that. So that's what it's saying. Like that's that's not working very well for you. It makes you uncomfortable. And as you're going through that, it makes it hard for you to really be ready to attract new other things. Now, for the for those of you who that, that message is not for you, okay, what's not working for you? 
again, kind of the same message that it's um, things might be shifting and changing very, very quickly. And you're just not used to those changes and you don't necessarily feel very comfortable with them. Um, however, then when we get to this card, it's a little bit different saying that you could be attracting people who are already in relationships. They might not be telling you. <laughs> they might already be married. They um, might say, you know, I just stay at my baby mama's house to help her with the kids, but like we're not together. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay. So anyway, that's not working for you. <laughs> but those are situations outside of yourself, right? And so they're like, you're just actually really learning a lot of lessons and you're taking those and you are, because um, you've mentally known them for a while, but now you're emotionally applying them and you're combining it with intuition to come to a place of calm. Like you're moving away from a lot of drama from the past few years, actually. And for some of you, it's three years. For others of you, it's six and a half years. And I know that's really oddly specific, but that's what I'm getting. Six and a half years. Anyway, um... They're like, you know, in this perspective shift, you're actually making huge investments in yourself and in your future. And again, another card of positive change as an omen. So good. Um, what is the overall outcome for you in the month of September? They're like, this might not be the month that you meet someone and you fall madly and desperately in love. It just might not be. Now, this is a general reading. So hopefully you're one of the unique people not in um, the category of one size fits all for Scorpio, where that's not the case. But for a lot of you, it might not be what happens in September. However, your instincts are on point, so you're not going to at all get into a relationship with somebody who isn't right for you. This month is not the month that's going to happen. You'll just cut through that bullshit. And so what you can do is be super excited about that because that means by the time somebody does show up in your life and you decide to keep them, they're worth keeping. Absolutely they are. So your overall lesson in regards to like kind of life lessons and emotional work that we're doing in the month of September is priorities. Well, that's probably why they're talking about routine so much, right? You're understanding the paramount importance of manifesting love into all situations. So, you know, if you're not going to work necessarily on manifesting love into your life from a romantic partner, you can put love into everything that you do. You can love the way it feels to make your kitchen clean. And then it will be cleaner. <laughs> like on the regular basis, it just will be. You can love the way it feels to pay your bills. Like you can manifest a good relationship with money so that you don't live in a lax state anymore. You know, like I love that I paid this on time. I love that I had enough money to pay this. And then sure as shit, next month, you're going to feel good instead of dread when you go to that mailbox and maybe there will be a check in there for you today, that day. Actually, I've been doing this for a while now. Today, out of nowhere, I went to the mailbox and I had, let's be real, I was honestly dreading it because I've been gone for a month. I haven't worked my job here, like um, doing tarot very much. And I haven't been doing my other job either um, because my grandma was ill and then she died. So I was traveling a lot. I was gone like a whole month. So I was like, oh, I haven't been working. I don't want to open these bills. and But I've been working on this for a while. Like every time I pay a bill, I'm like expressing, like shooting love out of my heart. I went to the mailbox today. I had a couple bills. But guess what else I had? I had a couple of refund checks from like bills that I allegedly overpaid before. I don't overpay shit. Let's be real. And I had one from my son's school, like some sort of reimbursement for travel it said I don't know what that's about so hey I promise you it actually works it sounds like bullshit but it actually does happen like um by doing this sometimes I find like $20 on the ground that happened to me I didn't find it on the ground I found it on a chair yesterday yeah so that's what I'm saying so basically, you know, by manifesting, putting love into everything that you do, you only increase the things that you love. You only get more blessings. So that's a lesson, something to work on. And if you are going to try to manifest a human into your life to love and cherish for the rest of your life, 
um, make sure that you're really feeling the love when you write down all the qualities that you desire for that person. All right, love and light. Bye. Thanks so much for watching my video. Check out terriblyaccurate.com for a personal reading. Follow on Snapchat, like on Facebook.